Hey, this is Drink Game Drunk, and we decided we're going to do an E3 episode because everybody else is doing it, so why not? We really need the clicks. So what's up, Ryan? Not much, Tim. Just sleeping at noon. And sleeping until 6. It was 5. Either way, it's close enough. Trying to get those days and nights back in, in sync, right? No, I just don't know what to do with my life anymore. That's that's what you get for being just uh, a night owl, a wild party animal. Wild old watching YouTube streams and playing video games. On meth. Then I would wouldn't have fallen asleep. Well, that that that's why it took you so long to actually get to sleep. I've really been up for a month. It's been, <laughs> been real productive. <laughs> I've been up for six weeks and I feel great. I see all the people who have died in my life in front of me. Everyone's dead. <laughs> yeah, so let's just uh, kind of try to make this real quick. So first, I kind of really wanted to talk about the the kind of unintentional leaks that have already happened before we get into our predictions that will either come true or not in the next week. Uh, have you have you heard about the the Transformers leak? No, a movie or or like game. It's a, it's, it's a game. So it's going to probably be just as bad either way, anyway. Until you hear who it's made by. Platinum Games. What else are they involved in? Uh, Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2, Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, um, Wonderful 101, uh, Vanquish. Yeah, Vanquish. Um, yeah. So hmm. really, in that that Legend of Korra game on the 3DS or whatever. Oh lord, that that's bad. Yeah, not a, yeah, I think that was kind of like their D team, like they're just like, hey, you guys are new here, work on this. In turn, make do now go. <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, this was uh, this was leaked today. It's uh, it's going to be a brawler, and it's cel shaded 3D, of course. Um, looks really cool actually um it's taking a lot of the generation one transformers you know like the old school um 80s cartoon not bumblebee well bumblebee is in there is he i don't yeah, ever I mean, remember bumblebee from any of the old shows how do you not he was literally literally the second main character i thought they always called him something else in other in the other no, medium he, 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 he was bumblebee up until he became gold bug but that was generation two Maybe I'm thinking like the more anime styled Transformers, like Armada and and stuff with the mini cons. Yeah, I'm talking about the old school, original American made Soviet war era. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I, I, I because I mean it's an allegory. I mean the original Transformers, oddly enough, is an allegory for the Cold War, which is strange. But yeah, if you go back and you actually look at it, like artistically, it's it's an allegory for the Cold War, which is insane. But yeah, uh, so Platinum's making this game. I mean, that's the leak so far. Um, looks real good. It's, you know, the old school Transformers, not that new Michael Bay shit. So, I mean, there's already a plus there. Um, being made by Platinum, that's a plus. Um, but yeah, that leaked a little early unintentionally. I, I have uh, zero hopes for a Transformers game. The, the ones made by High Noon Studios were actually competent. I mean, they weren't great but they were they were kind of in that tier of games that are no longer made kind of like that that b tier game yeah like it's okay like you yeah. can play it for a little bit and be all right yeah it's like it's like one of those 20 dollars titles that you're like well i don't feel like i wasted my money yeah it, it's just when a game costs 60 dollars you don't want oh, b yeah. grade yeah i mean when, when it comes to b grade you you want to kind of settle on that 29.99 Mm -hmm. bracket i mean that that seems perfect you know for for a game that didn't take you know seven years to develop seven and, years uh, is a long time for a game there's a few games out there that have been developed that long but we'll actually get into that in our top 10 predictions uh another real leak that happened uh, apparently bethesda was testing <laughs> i was accidentally uh had hot mics while they were testing out their twitch stream uh, and they leaked that Dishonored 2's coming out on the accidental hot mic. Oh, I didn't hear that one. 
yeah, this this was just a few hours ago. Um, to let everybody know, this is Saturday, June thirteenth, before the conference parts of E three officially start tomorrow. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, they they were testing their their Twitch channel tonight, and unbeknownst to them, they all had hot mics on while they were going through the scripts. And in the two minutes that were accidentally recorded, you know, on their Twitch channel, because you can't get rid of that shit. Nope, it's uh, gone. It, it's there forever. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the internet forever because somebody already had it on YouTube. But yeah, uh, at the end of the video, you hear somebody coming up to the desk. I'm assuming there's a desk because there has to be a desk, and. A guy saying like, "Hey, uh, we just went live for two minutes, and you, your mics picked up everything you just said." And like one of the guys is like, "Oh, ha ha, funny joke." And the guy's like, "No, fucking serious." And th that's when the channel ends. Oh lord. <laughs> so I mean, you could either look at it as an unintentional leak or maybe a very intentional leak to get hype up because Dishonored is kind of a game that was really loved by the people who loved it but also really disliked by the people who disliked it. Mm -hmm. So it might kind of be, you know, ginning up support, you know, and hype for it. But if you, if you, if you kind of let it slip that Dishonored 2 is a real thing, you can't really build up hype because it's already in existence if it's true. Or they could have just been fucking around with everybody. Maybe. I mean, it, so close to it they could have been. Depends on how many people were actually in the stream. To begin with, to, for them to think like, hey, people will get this out there if we just kind of like push this a little bit. Right. I don't know. It, it might be one of those things where just people have, you know, the Bethesda saved on their favorites and it alerted to them that it went live. Mm -hmm. you know? But I mean, who cares? We'll find out in a few days. There's no need to get, you know, super fucking crazy excited or anything. And we'll know in a few days. We'll actually we'll know in a few days about all this shit. Yeah. Um, the other real leak that came out, Dark Souls 3. Um, apparently, they've decided to go ahead and annualize Dark Souls, which I think is an absolutely terrible idea. But I don't know if I want to call it now that they're going to annualize it. They might, especially with... What, what was the... Oh, what was the other one? Dark Souls, the, like the expansion they had out. The Scholar one. Oh, Scholar of the First Sin? Yeah. So they had that, which I don't know you could maybe predict that they might be annualizing it especially when they put bloodborne out which is just another spiritual successor to the whole thing anyway well i mean let's let's be fair i mean bloodborne was made by the exact same company it was headed by the exact same guy miyazaki who did the first dark souls it's not even a spiritual successor it is a dark souls game like just because it doesn't have dark souls colon bloodborne doesn't change the fact that it has almost the exact same mechanics it's the exact same type of game yeah no so, it is it is the same type of game i'm just saying as yeah. far as naming scheme goes like it, it is another but right. you know dark souls game yeah i mean yeah yeah it, you know in any other name it it is uh but yeah it's dark souls 3 information leaked some screenshots came out um apparently uh, what's the guy? Uh, he used to work at IGN. Now he had, runs his own own channel over at Kind of Funny Games. Um, not it's not Colin Moriarty. Uh, hold on, let me let me find his name because I want to kind of give credit to the guy who actually broke the information. Um, what is his name? Why? Uh, I wish that Google search would have came up much faster. Uh, here I'll get it real quick. Greg Miller, yeah, he uh, used to work for IGN. Uh, he's one of the guys that went and decided to start his own like YouTube channel, and they're doing great. But yeah, he leaked information, you know. Well, not really leaked. He found information and then passed it on. Uh, but yeah, Dark Souls 3 is apparently, it's Miyazaki again. He's back, because he didn't do Dark Souls 2, because while Dark Souls 2 was being made, he was off making Bloodborne. So this is Miyazaki's return to the Dark Souls. You <laughs> know, I, I don't know how much you can call it a return if it's roughly two years later, you know, or a a few years later uh so yeah dark souls 3 is coming um and those are all kind of the big leaks i know of so far mild yeah. leak would be the uh smash bros character leaks which we'll right. find out about uh tomorrow morning i think right yeah they're doing their smash thing tomorrow to get kind of get before their nintendo e3 direct so. which i actually heard about these a few weeks like a week or two ago is somebody well, pulled data uh, mined the data out of the game with well, that an was update actually, that was more about a month or so ago yeah it's been we a few weeks 
Still, I mean, still the same opinion that I had then. I don't know why Ryu's coming in the game. Yeah, yeah I'm almost positive that's what's going to be happening. If if somebody mined the data out of the game, like that's pretty much definitive proof that we're going to have Ryu in the game, which is right. I really mean, stupid. I mean, I mean, not only did they mine you know the the data for his song they also mined the level so i mean he's pretty much a shoe in um and also roy's coming from fire emblem so he's, stupid he's so like, over represented you know like what what do we have like six fire emblem characters yeah um i i kind of i kind of figure the reason why they're putting so many fire emblem characters in the game is because they want to kind of drum up support for fire emblem um because it's picking up popularity in america i mean there's been several fire emblem games and some of them weren't even released in the states technically um yeah. they were released much later in the the gba but you know i'm i'm a huge fan of the fire emblem games i, I like i they're, they're some of my favorite turn-based games and and the fire emblem awakening for 3ds is a super great game i love the hell out of it but yeah it, it is a franchise that is way overrepresented and I think there's infinitely better characters that I'd be far more excited about. Mm, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight would have been great. Yeah, Shovel Knight or bringing back Snake from Metal Gear, even though I don't particularly care about that. But yeah, if if I I would be infinitely. I mean, I mean that's not saying that Shovel Knight's not coming, uh, because uh, DLC is a big thing now for them. Yeah. So we'll we'll wait and see on that, but yeah, I just I don't I don't understand why Ree is going to be in there. I mean, he's probably going to be a little Matt clone, which is why Roy is annoying because he's just a Marth clone. Yeah, yeah, he's a little little slower, I think, right? Yeah, Marth's are pretty quick. Yeah, Roy's a little slower, a little stronger, but yeah, I mean they they are pretty much copies of one another. But yeah, I don't I don't I don't. I mean, I guess that's cool for Capcom fans and Street Fighter fans, but Ryu fans are already just by the Street Fighter games. I mean, I, that's not really going to get people who are Street Fighter fans to go out and pick up a Wii U. No, and Street Fighter's been a little crazy as of late. Like, they haven't uh, really yeah. come out with anything. Yeah, I mean, they, they did that PS4 port. Um, I mean, Capcom themselves didn't do that, but a uh, third, uh, you know, like a, a small... Uh, port developer basically did that and i mean that game's all sorts of fucked up right now um and you know street fighter 5 is coming march of next year it's just you know uh, it's just there's there's not even a street fighter game on the wii u yeah and they and they put that one out on the excuse me the 3ds uh around launch and it wasn't that good yeah yeah, fighting games don't really translate well to to handhelds. No, there's a lot of movement really and and crazy button mashing that has to happen. Yeah. So let's let's uh let's go ahead and change direction and let's just go ahead and get into. I I made a I made a top ten list. I don't know how many I you know I made I have an actual list that I was making throughout the day. You know maybe I should have told you sooner, but I mean you would have been asleep anyway. Uh, sleep anyway, so it doesn't doesn't matter. But, I didn't know we I mean, wanted top ten. I, I've got about five. I'm thinking that I really want to see. Good enough. Five's good enough. I'll I'll go ahead and start since I have a few more. Um, I uh, the 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 PC gaming show will be on the 16th. That's the thing AMD's putting on. You know Microsoft is going to be there. They've announced support and they're going to do a little a little thing. I imagine it's mostly going to be around Windows 10 and kind of the the ubiquitousness between Windows 10 and Xbox Live about how they're going to essentially play together you know yeah i can see them doing that but as well as um using oculus with the uh the right. xbox and you know just as a quick aside fuck oculus for already making exclusive games fuck that procedure right now yeah hopefully uh hollow <laughs> lens will do something it's it's not even a market yet, and there's already exclusives for this VR headset. I don't think they even have. Do they have the final product out? The 1080 no, the version? No, the final product isn't even out yet. Good it's not Lord. coming out until like February or March of 2016. But so okay, dumb. that's not my prediction. Who? If, yeah, yeah. Fuck, 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 fuck that noise. Like you know, I, I'm tired of it in the console market. I'm 
you know, I, I get that the that Sony and Microsoft themselves make exclusive games and Nintendo does it. I'm cool with that. But let's stop doling out money for exclusives from other people. Let's just stop. Okay, but my prediction is that when when Microsoft gets on stage for the, the PC gaming show, they're going to do the same thing that they say every year. Oh, we're going to increase support for PC gaming, even though despite <laughs> despite the fact that they never actually do. Mm-hmm. But this, this year, I think it's going to be different. I think they're seriously going to hunker down, especially with Windows 10. And my prediction is that... Microsoft will announce that you can rent Xbox One games, stream them to your Windows 10 PC. Ooh. Because, I mean, for, for so long now, I mean, you know, Windows 10 right now is, is is you know, you, you can have your, you know, I had it for a while, um, the, the developer uh, beta test for it, basically. And Xbox Live is pretty much just sewn into Windows 10. And I honestly think that with with their uh, what is what is their server farm thing called? Um, For Microsoft? Yeah, it's it's their giant thing. Uh, it's kind of like Amazon's uh, giant server farm stuff. I do not know. Uh, let me look it up real quick. Uh, Microsoft. Oh, Microsoft Azure, Azure, it's their cloud computing thing. Oh, okay. And what I'm thinking is they're going to set up their Azure services to clone the or emulate Xbox Ones, and you're going to be able to rent a game or purchase an Xbox One game, download it to your Xbox One, and also stream it on your PC. Pretty interesting, but they, they've had things that have tried to do that in the past, and I really don't know how well that's going to hold up. Well, I mean, uh, PlayStation does it right now. With PlayStation Now, you can rent games and stream them, um, and it, it, it's holding up pretty well. I mean, you know, you have to have a pretty solid connection, but, you know, um, slowly and steadily, connection speeds are getting higher in America. Yeah. And that's kind of Microsoft's home turf right now. Actually, it's their only turf that they have because, I mean, they've always lost in Japan. Um, they're losing in Europe by a whole lot. So they kind of have to, like, focus back in on America and, and or North America anyways. And I think I think this might be a big thing. Uh, it, would, it would certainly be interesting, and I haven't heard anybody talking about this as a potential in – Personally, I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, if they were actually able to get rid of uh, physical media like they wanted to do, right? that would have been a really big kind of way to push this. Yeah. Now, I don't. I, chances are this isn't very likely. It's just this is predictions, so I'm going to say I'm just going to predict the things I want. Yeah, I don't see it <laughs> happening. They, right. they may do something with it. They may announce it, and, and it might be a couple years down the road. But I mean, I, that's that's where we're headed. So eventually, for ever how many years we do this, I'm going to use this one every year, and eventually it'll be right. One of these days. <laughs> All right, throw me one. Throw me one, Ryan. I want Borderlands 3, even though I haven't picked up the pre-sequel yet. I want to see Borderlands 3. You think you, you you think that you think they might have a team working on that already? I think so, because uh, it was last year that what when did the pre sequel come out? Uh, the pre sequel was early two thousand fourteen, I think. Late October two thousand fourteen. There we go. Are you serious? It's only been like seven months. Yeah, months? I, I think they're gonna reveal something that they've got a team working on it at the very but least. I, I think the pre sequel was actually done by somebody else. Yeah, it was 2K uh, Australia. Yeah, and I know their main team is working on that Blood um, Battle Battleborn or something like that. Sounds familiar. I th- yeah, because that's like their. Let me see, Battleborn. Yeah, it's. Uh, that's what I think their main team's working on, but they very well. I mean, I mean, they definitely have to be in like at least the concept and startup phase of Borderlands Three. Yeah, I, I'm hoping, or maybe some. I don't want to say DLC because 
a lot of the new DLC has been bad, like real bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the DLC is done with. I, I don't think they're going to be adding anything to uh, Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. I don't even, did they even add any DLC to the pre-sequel stuff? Yeah, those were some of the ones that got really bad reviews on Steam. Like, they were, were yeah. really, like, nobody liked them. Well, not a whole lot of people like the pre-sequel either, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I'd I like to see a, a 3. It, I, I think it might be a little soonish. But, I mean, what, two was, what, three years ago? 2012-ish, I think. Yeah, 2012, 2000, early 2013. One of the, probably early 2013. Yeah, it was 2012, September. Okay, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I, I'd say three years is, is good enough time. And, yeah, let's, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and see a three. Because they'll at least, you know, announce something like, yeah, we we got this in the works or, or, or something, you know, along the lines. Or another of a, CGI trailer. Yeah, or something along the lines of a Borderlands type game. Right. All right, I guess I'll, uh, anything else you wanted to say about that? No, I think we'll, we'll just have to see what happens, but it's all coming up real quick here. Yeah. Uh, my next one, number two on the list, and this kind of jumps off of uh, number one, is that okay? This is two things with Halo Five. I think Halo uh, with with uh, Windows, well, Microsoft saying like they're coming back to the PC platform and they're uh, kind of promising support for the PC again with gaming. I think Halo Five is going to be the first um, announcement. Halo Five is coming both to the Xbox One and the PC. Uh, pan I mean, pc i think it would be absurd not to right now the xbox one is not selling as well as it could and they're not going to be pushing as many halo 5 copies as they want <laughs> it would be very ironic if they didn't considering like we're trying to do you know integration with pc no you yeah. can't have this game and i i think this might be their first announcement and you know that they, they might not release it day and date with the xbox one version but i I am. I have a feeling that Halo Five will be coming to PC a few months after the Xbox One release. Interesting. And furthermore, I'm going to go ahead and say Halo Five is going to get delayed. It's set up right now for an October release, October 27th, and I think it's going to get delayed into November. Yeah, build up a little more hype for it. Well, not only that, it's just I think they need a little bit more stability after the Master Chief Collection debacle about that game still not working. Yeah, they got a lot of shit for that. <sighs> They're still getting shit for it because the game is broken again. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know how you can go making a series that's so lauded by fans and then half-ass like your big collection stuff. And not look through everything and make sure it's been beta tested properly. Well, I, I I can tell you why. It's a lot of reasons. It's it's four different it's four different games, four different engines, uh, all on one game with different net code, and it wasn't three four three industries that were actually at the forefront of making this collection. It was all different studios, you know, like kind of small time port studios. Mm -hmm. And they were all working on different parts of the game. So when you kind of make an amalgamation of all that, shit's just not going to work. My my biggest concern is the fact that it still doesn't work. And it's seven months later, or eight months. Yeah, well, just, uh, it, it, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to actually port it to PC. Cause well, I mean, I mean, the Xbox One architecture is the closest to PC than any console's ever been. Right, or if they can at least do it without fucking up royally. Right. Um, but I, I do think there's going to be at least a delay on Halo 5. I think they're going to want to throw it back in the cooker to beta test it a little bit longer and make sure that they don't have the same uh, six-month problem that they have had with the Master Chief Collection because they've kind of built... I mean, regardless of how deep you go, I mean, you know, we are both people who kind of look deeper into the thing and we're... I, I'm a person who knows that it wasn't 343 Industries who created this kerfuffle. 
but the average consumer does not know that. Right. So, you, you know, you've kind of built up a little ill will towards that community. So I'm thinking they're going to stick it back in the oven for at least a few weeks longer to, to make sure that when this releases, it's a game that's going to work. I, I hope so. Because, you know, like the shit we dealt with, with, um, uh, I forgot, the, I forgot the game for a second. GTA five with yeah. all the online issues, which actually I played for like three hours last night and had zero problems. Right. And that, I mean, to, to be fair, that game has had a few year head start for b- before it was even put on PC. Mm-hmm. And, even, and even then, it still had problems for a good month. Yeah, and I'm just saying, like, they took a year, over a year, to get that game out to pour on, on PC. And it's, it's just, that's a long time to port a game. Yeah. And still yeah. have issues with your servers and stuff. Well, yeah, and they, they constantly delayed the PC version. I mean, that game was supposed to re- be released, like, before the end of 2014. Mm-hmm. And we just barely got it, you know, a month ago, month, I think. Month month and a half, maybe? Yeah. All right, throw me another prediction. Throw throw, throw one my way. Zelda. I I know they, they, they claim, didn't they claim they're not going to reveal any Zelda? I they think they're did. actually going to. All right. Going to go ahead and backspace and remove that from my 10. Because <laughs> I, I think I think they're going to show Zelda. I think they have to. They, they you know, they, they showed a little bit of it last year and the year before. No, no. It was, or was, it it was the just same thing. Year. No, no. The year before, it wasn't even a thing. I'm like, thinking they, tech they, demo for, um, for the Wii U. That's what I'm thinking. Because they had the Zelda yeah. tech demo. Yeah. Maybe, but yeah, it's just... It was, the, you know, the spider and the cave in the temple, and the, they, they were showing off their lighting engine and stuff. I Are you sure? Because I thought that was the Wii. I think that was the Wii tech demo. Mm, I do, no, well, either, maybe? E- either way, yeah, it's just... Uh, I, I have a feeling that they have to show it. Um, I, don't, I don't think they're in any other position, because all they have this year is Yoshi's Woolly World, which is coming up in, I think, a few weeks. Ooh. I hope um, it's better than the 3DS game. Yeah. It's just... It, 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 they, it looks so good. They didn't capture the same... Feeling. Yeah, it, it wasn't... That innocence, that that Yoshi's Island innocence. Well, yeah, there's something with the color palette, too. It's a little more pastel like darker right. pastel colors in the... Um, pastel I like that. Pastel. And it, it's just, it doesn't capture that fun brightness. And I think the, yeah. the lines are a little thinner too, which like I overall, think... it kind of does kill the mood. Yeah. But I, I think Woolly World is going to be, you know, I mean, it's not going to be a hard game. I mean, Yoshi's Island wasn't a hard game, but mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to do that Yoshi's, uh, that Yoshi series good. It looks good. It's cute as all fuck. It does it look the, adorable. It's the fucking cutest thing in the fucking fucking world. You know what we need to play is uh, Epic Yarn. Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah. Um, I th- That's another one. I think they're going to reveal a new Kirby game. You, I don't think so. I, I don't. I think I, I think they're too close to the last, you know. What was I mean, the last game? Uh, Canvas Curse? No, Canvas Curse was the Wii. Uh, well, it's the one that came out on the Wii U. Uh, the one was similar though, right? Similar uh, idea. Rainbow, Rainbow Curse. Rainbow Curse, yeah. Yeah, it, it's the thing. Like, I, I have it. I haven't played a whole lot of it. Um, I'll bring it down. Um, I totally forgot that was a thing because it's not yeah. like a traditional Kirby game, right? Is your no, your ball it's, form? It's, yeah, you you don't have any like real direct control. You kind of just maneuver Kirby with the gamepad. Hmm. It's 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 fun for what it is. Excuse me, but uh, yeah, I I think they have to show Zelda. I just think they have to. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they claimed that they weren't going to, but th- right. there's no way that they're not. It's I I just think they have to because I mean this year they have maybe maybe Star Fox, you know. They're gonna um, reveal Star Fox. I, I'm almost 100 yeah, percent on that. They're going to reveal it, 
doesn't mean it's coming out this year. I'm, I'm talking about, like, guaranteed things that are coming out this year. The only things we know about are Yoshi's Woolly World and Mario Maker. Yeah. And, and those aren't, like, super big games that they're... Right. And, I mean, Monolith Soft has their RPG coming that uh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, that that, that should yeah. be coming out this year. I mean, but that's not direct Nintendo. I mean, Mon- I think they own Monolith Soft now, but that's not actually like Nintendo EAD or EAD2 or any of their dev studios working on anything. So I, I, I just feel like if they don't have Zelda in the lineup to at least show like some progress on it, then they really don't have much unless there's some things they're going to throw out. Yeah, or like weird DLC for yeah. for games that are already out. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to my next one. Uh, the Last Guardian. It's been in development almost as long as Duke Nukem Forever uh, since 2006, 2007. It was originally a PS3 game by the same people who did Ico, Ico however you want to say it. Um, and, uh, what's the other one where you climb the monsters? Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus. I always forget that name because it's too long. Um, apparently the rumors have been circulating that Mark Cerny, the, the lead developer behind the entire PlayStation 4 platform, um, the guy who was also behind Knack is just kind of a fun project. Uh, he, apparently the rumor is he and his entire team moved over to finish this game because it's been in develop for eight, in development for eight years. And I think it's either time to show that game or shelve that game. Hopefully. It's just, it, it's, it, it, <sighs> I remember seeing this trailer years and years and years ago at E3 in like 2006, 2007, and just being blown away by it. it you know, it has that same kind of whimsical flair that Ico has, that uh, Shadow of the Colossus has. You know, it has. It just it it felt like that kind of game. It felt whimsical and adventurous, and it Last Guardian it looked beautiful then. And of course, they're going to announce that it's been moved to PS4, and. I think they're finally going to put up. I think they're finally going to show. And my my big prediction is that they're going to drop it and say it releases in November. Five days. <laughs> because Sony has nothing. They have no first-party games for uh, winter. They don't have any games for, like... October, November, December, because Uncharted 4 was pushed back until 2016. They were kind of banking on that to get them through the holiday season. And they they don't want to lose momentum against Microsoft right now, especially going into the home stretch of this year. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it's time to show The Last Guardian or uh, shelve it, just can the project, because it's been in development for eight years, and... It's, it's just time to show it. It, it. It's time to release that game, whether it's good or not. It's just it's it's time to air the dirty laundry one way or another. You know, it's funny. You said The Last Guardian, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody has a list of some of their stuff they're thinking. And like the second comment is cross The Last Guardian off the list. Well, yeah. And this I mean, is from because, February. Yeah, I mean, Last Guardian everybody wants this game everybody who plays games more than casually knows about this game wants this game and i i think i think a large portion of people just want to see the shit show i think they want to see duke nukem forever too honestly no definitely I not do. i want nothing no, to do with that i i just think a, a a certain percentage of people who are saying i want to see this kind of want to see it crash and burn and regardless if it crashes and burns or soars and flies, this game just needs to come out so people just stop talking about it. Just stop talking about it. They won't, though. It'll come out and people will be like, where's the next one? Right? What, what's, what, what's Team Ico working on next? Mm-hmm. So it's supposed right. to be like Ico and, and Shadow? Y- yeah, you, you have the... Okay, you know Never Ending Story? You know Atreyu and his Atreyu. big... Atreyu! What, what what what's the what's the big Falcor. dog Falcor? Yeah, it's kind of like that. You're kind of a Treyu and Falcor. You know, um, you go on these adventures, 
and that's pretty much all we know from the trailer eight years ago. It looked great back then. I mean, the fur effects back then, everything it was in, you know, it was in engine, looked beautiful. It was for the PS3. It was supposed to be like a not a launch game for the PS3, but within the first year, within the launch window, at least the first six months or something. Well, what was yeah. that shitty ass dragon game that came out at launch for the PS3? Oh, I know what you're talking about with the horrible it move. Sucked uh, the horrible, ass. Yeah, the horrible six axis controllers. Um It looked really, really, really good. And it looked sucked. Really good. It yeah, was terrible. Um, what was the name of that game? Let me Who cares? Because that, that is actually a game I bought with my PS3. Um Let me see. P- PS3 launch games were those are okay, here we go. United States. Uh it looked like Reign of Fire. Okay, maybe it wasn't a launch game. Um, it was very soon after launch, at least. I don't know. I just I, I just know that it's a game that I picked up within that launch release or whatever, and it was talked about forever, and then when it came out, it was just like, oh, these controls kill this game. And the whole thing sucked. Yeah. All right. Throw me another one, Ryan. Metroid. They have to. I want it. I need it. They haven't so. done a new Metroid game in so long. I don't think they're going to, but I want them I'm gonna to. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, Retro will announce something, but it's going to be another Donkey Kong. Yeah. Donkey Kong. Can Kong's, you dig it? Yeah, it's all right. They're hard as hell. Yeah. Do- Donkey Kong's been getting harder and harder throughout the years. It's just like this is yeah. some kind of weird linear progression I was not expecting from a game with a giant ape. Yeah, I... I love Tropical Freeze. I really do. But, and I love Retro as a studio. It's just they need to be back on Metroid. They need to be. Yeah, I don't I don't want a 3DS Metroid unless they do, like, a side-scroller one that's right. not 3D. Yeah. Like, that would be cool, too. I want to see Metroid Dread, but I don't think that's ever going to be a thing that happens. Yeah, it, it's just... No more Met- prequel, like no more in between <laughs> Metroids. I need Metroid Five. I think, I think, uh, I think Retro's Retro's talent, their core talent, is kind of wasted on Donkey Kong. And as much as I love the Donkey Kong games, and especially Tropical Freeze, I really like it. I think their talent at making like this really vibrant, adventurous world that you you want to explore. Because they make wonderfully fun exploration zones. Um, I think Donkey Kong is kind of lost on them. I think I think their talents are kind of wasted with Donkey Kong. If they want a Donkey Kong game, give it to somebody else. But let Retro make a fucking Metroid game finally. Just let them, again, let them make it. Yeah, I, I really, really want to see a new one. Because we haven't seen a new one since Other M. And Other M was a long time ago. And that wasn't even Retro Studios. Nope. That was Ninja Theory or whatever. It was just Team Ninja. Oh, yeah, Team Ninja. I forget those are two different teams. They did Ninja the boob Ninja physics Theory. games. Yeah, Ninja Theory does those real real weird things. Um, Okay, I guess I'll, I'll throw up uh, another one. Uh, kind of probably in the same vein of your Metroid one. Capcom announces a new Mega Man because why the fuck not? No, for a second I thought you were, like, they actually announced one. I don't know, I got hopeful. <laughs> You're like, oh, did... Oh. I was like, are you serious? Wait, oh, hold on, we're doing predictions. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm leaving, I'm gonna go get it right now. I, I was like, line. wait, when we're doing predictions. No, I just, I, I think it's odd that Capcom would release information early on releasing, like, this kind of Mega Man quote-unquote anniversary collection and get out ahead of that Mm -hmm. and then not follow that up with an even bigger Mega Man announcement. And yeah, I'm well aware that Mega Man, in as much as both of us love them, they have never really honestly sold all that well. No, they sell like ass. Yeah, I I think the best-selling Mega Man game has only sold about 270,000 copies. It's not a million seller even. Um, But let's be honest, the fan base is also pretty fucking rabid. Yes. Uh and you know, yeah, you, your your best Mega Man might have only sold two hundred seventy thousand copies, but you're guaranteed at least one hundred fifty thousand copies, no matter what type of bullshit you put out. Yeah, and they have Mighty Number no. Nine coming out too. 
Well, I mean, that's not Capcom, though. No, but it's uh, KG Inafune. Right, yeah. Um, so and... it's about just as good, I think. No, I mean, we've talked about this before. I've heard some real bad impressions of Mighty Number no. 9. Yeah, that, that's one we're just going to... I'm going to have to actually play it before yeah. I judge that one. Because some Mega Man style games, you're like, oh, this looks really good. And then you play it and you're like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. But uh, I just I, I think pushing out that that Mega Man collection before E three might be a shape of things to come, so to speak. I think they might put they might be putting a small little team on making a new Mega Man game. Mega Man Legends two. <laughs> I hope to God not. I would love that. I know a lot of people really love that game. I haven't played it in like 10 years though, so... That was that RPG version, right? It was the 3D first, like third person one. Right, the the N64 one, but didn't it have like RPG elements? A lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, no, no. The game was like Bloodborne. Mega Man. Yeah, you you got, you got RPG in my Mega Man, no thank you. No, I loved Um, it. It was great. You know, um, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine to think that. (laughs) Because a lot of the newer, like the Zero stuff, has a lot of RPG elements. Yeah, and they're also not as good as the old Mega Man and X games either. Mm, some of the X games aren't very good. Uh, Mega Man X is the single best Mega Man. I said game. some of the X games. I'm I'm not talking about Mega <laughs> Man X. That's not some of them. That is Mega Man X. Yeah, Mega Man X two three are. Well, okay, Mega Man X and X3 are great. Um, X2 is just kind of more the same X, and 3 is really, really good, and I think from there it kind of starts tail diving. But they're still fun games. They're not they're not great games, but they're fun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Zero's a great character, um, but, eh, I still like my Mega Man. Yeah, I, I like the whole sword thing. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the sword thing. Uh, I think when they designed the sword, they didn't design worlds around it, and it kind of made everything kind of inconsequential. A little bit. It was a lot easier to to blast through it than it is a Mega Man yeah. game where you can, you have to think about it your first run through. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I think they designed the worlds, and then they decided to add zero in. It's just they. It feels so easy with zero. Everything feels so much easier. Because he's OP. Yeah, no shit. Um, all right, throw me another one, Ryan. You got like one or two left. I, I think they're going to do Resident Evil. I, I kind of want to see a new Resident Evil because I never played 6. I actually yeah, should probably what? pick up 6. <laughs> guess what? Nobody else played it either. Yeah, I, I think they'll I, do a new one. I know a lot of people bought it. I just don't think a lot of people played it because from what I heard, a lot of people kind of like tapped out at like the first 10 minutes of that game. Yeah, like I played five because that was right when I got my uh, computer. Yeah. And like that, it was fun. It was fine. It was fine. Minus all that overt racism. There was no overt racism. Yes, I'm so was. tired of that. Hey, there was. Come on. How was there overt racism? You know, I could have made a good argument five years ago, but it, I've been so far removed from that. All I know is that there are legit arguments that it is overtly racist. That might be. If you're, you know, stupid. That's perfectly fine to be wrong. It's okay, Ryan. Uh. Like I'm here, let me let me just do this real quick. Resonant Evil 5 Overt Racism. <laughs> yup, it's racist. Yep, it there came with clickbacks. So yep. I typed it here in Google and Google said I mean, yes. And the guy who wrote the article, his name's Her- Hiller or her name is Hillary Goldstein, so I'm pretty sure she's right. <laughs> <laughs> you can clearly see these are Jewish zombies here. No, it's just I I remember when this game came out, there were legit concerns and legit legit rationalization between between, you know, with it being overtly racist. Like I'm so far removed from it that I can't make an actual argument for it, but I do remember there being valid reasons why. I don't. You're in Africa. You're gonna have black zombies. 
I think it I think it extends way beyond that. I think it has to do with all the characters in Africa having very African traits and the black uh, female protagonist having very white characteristics. Yeah, she she's fairly light skinned and and I and I think that was one of the big concerns is that you're you're set in this world of it, it, and I don't even think it's South Africa. I think it's it's Northern Africa where shit gets real bad. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you, you have the one of the main protagonists being a very light skinned with a lot of white qualities that are that have a tendency to be associated. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. I mean, you know, like I, I'm sure if I read up on this a little bit, I'd have a much better argument. But I do remember there being valid criticism for it. I'm not saying the game is honestly overtly racist i just remember there being some pretty harsh criticism that had some legit concerns but getting getting back to e3 none of that is relevant no um (laughs) you think there's going to be a resident evil 7 probably because i mean of course there's going to be a resident evil 7 that's still a popular franchise resident evil (laughs) 6.2 the better one the bettering uh, yeah, so, I, I don't really know what... I don't even remember what they did with 6. I just remember that I played 5 on hard mode the first time through, and I took, like, 35 tries to beat the final boss. I was like, ah, can't do that again. Let me look this up real quick. Let me see how popular Resident Evil is. Um, oh, shit. Resident Evil 6 actually sold 5.2 million. So, yep, they're making another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just don't remember it because I was like, yeah, 5 was okay. Let me see. My favorite is Resident Evil 4. Let me see where that... Um, 2.3 million PS2, 1.9 million Wii, 1.6 million GameCube. So, 2, 3, 4, 5.5-ish million? Yeah, and that's my favorite one, and that one sold just slightly better than 6. Um, the best-selling Resident Evil was 5, at 6.5. Yeah. You got really quiet. Do what? You got really quiet. Oh, am I am I quiet? Yeah. How about there? That's uh, normal. Okay. Yay! I'm normal. Ish. But uh, yeah. Uh, Resident Evil Four was my favorite Resident Evil. That sold about five point five ish. Um, best selling Resident Evil all the time is five with six point five million. Hmm. And Resident Evil Six is the second best selling. So yeah, I'm I'm sure they'll be making a new one. It's just. I really enjoyed Resident Evil 4 for the shakeup it did. It kind of made it a little bit. It made it a little bit more action oriented. It's just they kept making them more and more action oriented, and I kind of started really disliking that. Instead of actual survival horror, because some yeah. of the older games were pretty scary. Yeah, I think Resident Evil 4 made a perfect mixture of survivalist and also action oriented. Mm-hmm. I'd like them to go back to that. At least, you know, if if they make games more like 4, you would hope they wouldn't include any escort missions. I hope they never include an escort mission in anything ever. In any game. Hey, Tim, can you take your grandma down to... No! No, I hate her. No! Let her get there on her own. She doesn't know how to hide in the barrels. She doesn't even remember her own name. I don't care. If she can't get there herself, give her a shotgun. I don't care. Have that weird guy in that cab take her. But yeah, seriously, if if games could just stop with the escort missions until they finally figure out how pathing works, and I, I realize it's a it's a hard nut to crack. I get it. I'm not I'm not blaming devs for being shitty devs. It's fucking complicated. It's insanely complicated to make a game. I get that. But if you can't get something fucking right, take it out of your fucking game. Just take it out. Hey, how do we make this player feel like they don't know what's going on anymore? Yeah, if you want to kill your mood, atmosphere, everything you've built up in your game so far, add a fucking escort mission. Because you'll make every player go, you know what sounds good real not right now? A ham fucking sandwich. That sounds good. 
Yeah, exactly. Escort missions have never been done well, and Assassin's Creed, take fucking note. You have never done a good escort mission. In fact, your escort missions are probably the worst ever. Or how about the, revor- the reverse escort missions, where you have to follow somebody? Right, it, yeah, if, if I have to follow somebody, you better add auto padding in there, where I don't have to hold the fucking D-pad down. Or But uh, then you'll get all those people that are pissed off because now it's a movie. Yeah, that's fine. Some sometimes there's some shitty parts in movies where I can get up and I can go take a pee or get a coke or something. Yeah. It's perfectly okay to have that shit in your game. But okay, yeah, it's just it'd be great if the Resident Evil series moved back to a more survival oriented game. Like I, I get that action is kind of the thing now, and we like to shooty shoot shoot everything in the face. I get it, but. I, I'd like a, a better mixture of the survival. Yeah, because like you, well, you start off as Jill, and that's a little more believable as someone who's not going to be like, oh, look at me, I'm a big, strong man, I can take care of myself, I'm going to kill these zombies. And then you in five, you're fucking Chris Redfield with your 47-inch biceps. And your, bazoo- your, bazoo- your arms that shoot bazooka missiles. Yeah, and it's just like, there's no real threat other than, you know, like, oh, I ran out of ammo. Oh, I can't carry enough ammo. I got to use my pack mule over here to trade ammo and guns with. Never met a fucking cop in as good of a shape as he was. Nope. Never. <laughs> Not at all. All right. So, yeah, bring out a good Resident Evil. I'm all for that. Something that's actually, you know, not ass. Yeah. Like, honestly, the, the last game I honestly enjoyed, I, I mean, I had a friend who absolutely loved, 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 loved Resident Evil 5, but that was just too much action for me. It was good for me because, like, I, I wasn't going for the whole, um, I need a fucking new Resident Evil, you know, because I wasn't always a huge, I wasn't really a huge Resident Evil fan. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. But, like, so it didn't really hurt my feelings when they didn't make it like the rest. Yeah. Like, I wasn't a big fan of these games, but I'm offended now. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that doesn't hurt me. Don't care. <laughs> All right, let me throw another one at you. Uh, you, you heard you heard much about No Man's Sky? Uh, zero. Do you know what it is? No. That's why I said zero. Okay, No Man's Sky is a game that's been hyped up for two years or so. It's by the developer uh, Hello Games. And it's a giant, sprawling Minecraft in space is what people think it is. Um, It's procedurally generated. You fly around in a ship, go to new planets, see cool shit. Um, About a year ago, they had a catastrophic event to where their entire... Uh, basement flooded all their equipment was ruined and pretty much at that point it seems like sony money headed them and it turned into a ps4 exclusive it's scheduled to release this year um my prediction is that that game is totally not coming out this year no probably Uh, not the things i'm looking at look really cool it looks really cool but we still don't even know what you really do in that game nobody knows and yeah they could be keep keeping it tight-lipped uh, but this game has built up so much buzz that it's almost impossible to live up to what people think it's going to be mm-hmm. and i don't i mean that game is definitely in a showable state but i think that game is, is the game that's going to be pushed back over and over and over again i think that game is not even going to come out in 2016 Oh man, that because that looks really neat. Like I'd like to see that. You know how I can tell it's neat? Cause of colors. Cause of the way it is. <laughs> you can tell it's neat because because of the way it is. And because of the spaceships. But yeah, this is a game that has been on everybody's radar for a long time. Uh, the devs seem real great, but they're a tiny fucking studio. And yeah, they might have grown since P- you know the Sony. Uh, people money hatted them and i don't use that term like in a derogative sense it's just they threw money at them and it's clear because it's now a ps4 exclusive i'd like to see it on pc so i I don't have to buy a ps4 i 
I think it's PS4 slash PC because, you know, saying console exclusive still means you can put it on PC, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that game is going to be d delayed until never. I think that game is not coming out until 2017. And I think that game is wearing about six pant sizes too big. And there's two options. It's delayed forever and comes out as a competent, really great game in 2016 or 2017, or it comes out real soon, and it's a real bad game. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing them do the former rather than the latter, though. Yeah, that's kind of the disappointing thing, is that it's probably going to be released early and be bad. Because um, of money. Right, but I... I just don't. I don't see that game coming out anytime soon. I don't. Um, I. It will be shown at this E3, but I think a delay will also be announced that it's at least going to be summer 2016. Yeah, I, I guess I haven't heard anything about this one because it's been so all over the place. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Throw another one my way, or your last one, rather. Um. I don't have too much. I'd really like to see Castlevania, but I know that's not happening. Not in any really traditional sense of the word, so I, I, I'm not even going to predict anything for that. Well, yeah, I, I think Konami is going to show up, and they're going to have Metal Gear Solid Five, and it'll probably be at the PS4, you know, the Sony uh, press conference, and I think that's it. I don't even think... I don't even know if they have a booth. I think they're just probably bringing uh, Phantom Pain for the, the Sony event. And they're just going to walk out on stage. And it's going to be interesting because if, what if, like, it, it seems like there's, you know, of course there's bad blood be between Kojima and Konami right now to the point where Kojima has pretty much went radio silence on Twitter or any type of communication. So it's going to be interest interesting to see if Konami actually, uh, I guess, allows Kojima to get on stage and talk about Metal Gear Solid Five, mm -hmm. Because... I imagine he's going to get on stage and it's going to be one of those blink twice if you need help. Yeah, he's been super hush-hush still. Yeah, like, he, he, he hasn't said anything and I'm pretty sure he's under strict NDA not to be like, fuck Konami. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to get on stage and blink a few times to be like, please help, I'm in, I'm in Konami jail. Yeah. I, I guess what I really want to see is Darksiders. I, I think I'd like to see a new Darksiders, like them expand on it a little bit and not just another perspective like they did with 2. Because 2 got boring really quick. I need a new Darksiders like I need a Mustang GT500. So very, very badly. <laughs> so basically, I need it yesterday. God, I need a Darksiders 3 because, God, that, that series... In two games built up such a fun and interesting world that I wanted to explore and be a part of mm -hmm. and make sweet, sweet babies with. Because, you know, in as much people say, like, I want a mature Zelda. Guess what? You fucking yeah, got it. Yeah, it was there. You got it. Guess what? You have it already. Go back and fucking Dark Siders play 1 it. was absolutely Zelda. Because yeah, I was playing but, puzzles in the first part of the game, and I'm just like, this is Zelda. Look at this yeah. chest over here. Like, it's weird because it, it, it's really weird because the first Darksiders is very much Adventurous Zelda. The second Darksiders is very much Adventures of Link type side-scrolling action. It's kind of weird how similar similar that is to the actual Zelda games. Mm -hmm. And, like, with the other characters that they kind of uh, hinted at in Darksiders 1 and 2, you know, the other uh, Riders of the Apocalypse. Yeah. There was supposed to be a character that was like all guns all the time. And it's like, my God, we need a Darksiders 3 so I can get to like that kind of Western Desperado slash Unforgiven slash Man with No Name, but in a an apocalyptic setting. Mm -hmm. I, I need that. I really actually do need that. It was fun. I, I never finished 2 because I, I got stuck somewhere and I'm just like... I don't know what's happening anymore, but I like, you know, take a week or two off and then you take another like month off and you're like, I don't know what's happening anymore in this game. Your horse cannot go there. But like, dude, I'm death. It's like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure it can. We, we are death incarnate. I'm pretty sure my horse is cool here. Um, 
but yeah, I, I played both Darksiders 1 and 2. I recently just rebought Darksiders 2 on the Steam sale because, yes, please. Mm-hmm. Um, I, will, I will support that game in any any capacity whatsoever. The studio that made it, Vigil Games, I believe, yeah. uh, the team was broken up and the the rights were sold to somebody else. And I do remember hearing something a while back that they did intend to do something with the IP. And I think they've been slowly trying to collect the people who worked on these games. So, yeah. I don't even have that on my list, but I honestly would probably move that to the number one thing I want to see is a Darksiders 3. Yeah, I really want to see that. I need to finish too. It's it's really good. Like you kind of have to go into it with a different aspect than you did with the first one. A Darksiders one was more puzzly uh, exploration. Darksiders two is a little bit more linear, a little bit more action oriented. But mm-hmm. you know, it's also very intentionally built that way. They kind of wanted a different style of game, which is great. Like when you when you can pull that off even half acidly, I, I applaud it. When you can go from one style to the next. Right, it, it's yeah. it was good. It just, I didn't enjoy the parts of the second one that I did as much as they did the first. Well, yeah, I mean, there. I mean, in one of my, you know, uh, next podcasts we do, I'll talk about, uh, you know, my next top ten game. But even in my top ten game list of all time, there are parts in game the games that I just absolutely don't like, and there are things in Dark Siders one and two that I just do not like, and I had to, you know plop down and just physically force myself through some parts but the good parts are so good that they make you kind of just be okay with the bad parts i mean that's what makes a great game is that no game is going to be perfect um no game is ever a 10 i think honestly um i don't think any game will ever be a 10 just like i don't think there's particularly a perfect movie um, unless you want to count Blade Runner, but that's that's a different topic. Mm, um, another time. Yeah, but yeah, it Dark Siders one and two were so different, and they are still no they're they're still very different from the games that are being put out. Yeah, they're not they're not so cookie cutter. Yeah, and it's a super fucking interesting topic, like. The, the fact that nobody else has done, like, the Riders of the Apocalypse is crazy. Yeah, nobody has, have they? It's That's always just, just been kind of like no, they're, they're part of the enemy or whatever. Yeah, like, there's a, there's this comic, there's, it's one of the few comic book series I read. It's called East of West. Um, and it's kind of about the Horsemen of the Apocalypse and, like, uh, living after the end times... I don't want to spoil too much on why it's not actually the end times, uh, but it feels kind of like Darksiders in a very odd way. Um, yeah, it's just, I'd really just love, I, I, I love that topic. I love like the, the horsemen of the apocalypse. I like that concept. Like it's, it's just super fucking interesting. And I'm honestly surprised that, a Darksiders 3 has not been announced, especially with how popular, how much of a cult following Darksiders and Darksiders 2 has built up. Yeah, I, I don't know how well the game sold, though. I think I, I think they've done exceptionally well that they're on Steam now. Yeah, because I think I, I got all of the DLC and some extra bullshit with Darksiders 2 for like $10 on a yeah. sale like three years ago. Yeah, and I think I just bought the ent- uh, I bought the entire collection because it was cheaper to buy the entire collection with all the Darksiders 2 DLC, which I didn't have, than to buy it independently. I think I bought the entire Darksiders collection. That's Darksiders 1, 2, all the DLC for both, for I think $12. And I don't know a better way to spend $12 right now. Yeah, the thing was that the uh, Darksiders 2 to for some of like the DLC stuff, like the weapons and whatnot, you had to sign up for THQ's stupid ass thing. Whatever yeah. it was. I don't remember what it was, but it, it was really, really annoying. Good. Well, I don't think you have to worry about that anymore since THQ doesn't exist. No. Nope. Luckily, you don't have to sign in to play the game. 
But yeah. like to redeem your weapons and stuff. It's like, well, that's a real pain in the ass. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I guess I'll move on because I still have, I have four left plus I added one. Um, I think Rocksteady, uh, the the developers behind the good Batman games, um, they're about to release Arkham Knight, of course. But I think at this E3, they're going to announce they're working on a Justice League game. Justice League. I honestly think they're going to move over either to a Justice League game or what I really want them to do is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but I don't think that's possible. Battletoads? Battletoads I, would actually be kind of cool. I don't want a Battletoads game. I don't like Battletoads. You don't, you don't have it? You don't have Battletoads there? I have Battletoads. That doesn't mean I like Battletoads. <laughs> Just need it for the irony. I actually do I, I think Battletoads is a bad game. So you don't think we're going to go Batman Beyond? You think they're going to go Justice League? I honestly think that Rocksteady is going to do Justice League. Um, and if not Justice League, I think... if it, I mean, they're going to focus on a DC character because Rocksteady is a studio owned by Warner Brothers. I think they're either going to do an overall Justice League or I think they're going to focus on either Superman or Flash. Especially, especially with how popular the, the new Flash series is, which makes me think just right now that they might actually do a Green Arrow or Daredevil. Um, well, that no, seems I mean, a little too early. Well, I mean, they wouldn't do Daredevil because Warner Brothers does not own Daredevil. Oh yeah, I forgot Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. They might do a Green Arrow because that Arrow series, despite it being terrible, and I, d I can't fathom why anybody likes like Flash. Flash, the Warner Brother, you know, the the series on CW or whatever, it's actually good. The Arrow series, however, is the most angsty, broody, teenage, mid-twenties. It, it's... The, 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 the show Arrow feels like Oliver Queen, despite the character that's playing him being in his late 20s, early 30s, having a midlife crisis. The guy does look angsty. I think it's part of the, the costume, too. Like, brings that whole angsty thing together. Well, the thing that I just dislike the most about it is, like, Oliver Queen has always kind of been, like, a kind of stern, but yet really sarcastic or, and sardonic kind of guy. Like, he's always been super sarcastic assholey. Um, the character in Arrow is just like, oh, you have failed this city. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man, you failed this city. But, yeah, I don't see – I can't fathom why anybody likes that show or how popular it is. Like, The Flash show got Barry, uh, Barry Allen right. It got the character right. And, yeah, it has its its tropes of, of being a CW show where there's kind of teenage drama going on. Despite them all having jobs uh, – out of college and in their mid to late twenties, they still have those high school situations. Of course they do. Those are always the worst. Cause I hate that like standard sitcom high school type situation that always happens in television programs now. Well, the biggest problem with arrow is just like er literally every female character in the show has their, will they or won't they bang Oliver queen? It's like, Okay, yeah, let's just have every fucking character want to bang Oliver Queen, sure. Like, what is this, a harem anime? It's just, it's fucking ridiculous. It's, it, there's so many tropes. And, yeah, I guess people could be like, well, it's entertaining. It's like, I can get that it's entertaining, but please don't call it good, because it's not good. All right, moving on. Uh, yeah, I think Rocksteady will develop a Justice League game or focus on The Flash or... Or Superman. I would really like to see them focus on Superman. <laughs> Superman 64 again. Yeah, but nobody's gotten the Superman game right. So good luck if they do decide to do that. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, my next prediction is that despite Nintendo saying that they won't talk about the NX, they're totally going to talk about the NX. Nintendo's full of like bullshit right now. Well, not only that, but both of us are Wii U owners and we can both adamantly agree the wii u is super dead like buried in the ground dead doesn't mean i'm not gonna take that fucking defibrillator to it <laughs> please come back wii u i love you please i need more competent games well you're not getting them you're not bayonetta three no not gonna happen 
but yeah, it's I in as much as I hate to say it, Nintendo needs to bury the Wii U and I honestly think they just need to get ahead of it and say like, "Hey, this is the NX coming out 2016. Every Wii U owner will get a stipend, a stipend for buying it." Sweet. You I'd love that. It. And you know, you could have of course, you know, the NX not necessarily backwards compatible, but maybe the ability to have cross-gen games kind of like the old twilight princess to where zelda's both on the wii u and the nx and star fox is both on the wii u and the nx it's just i think they need to get ahead of the curve right now acknowledge and i know i know nintendo's a prideful company and they don't publicly acknowledge their failings but man would it be great for them to just be like yep wii u right and then just move on it was just the controller right right yeah it's just i'd like to just see them get ahead of it and just say as long as they market properly because if they don't market properly this time like they're gonna they're gonna fail really extra hard yeah it's just i i think they are gonna talk about the nx they might not directly talk about it but there's going to be something thrown in their their nintendo direct that has very key phrasing to basically say these games will be cross generational or something. Maybe. That'd be interesting. There, there weren't too many cross platform games like they had with. Well, I think Twilight Princess was kind of the only one that went from GameCube to Wii. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking. But I think they're going to pull that again with Zelda. I think it's going to be cross generational. Hmm. It'd be interesting to see. I, I, I just want to. I'm curious what they think they're going to charge for it and what kind of hardware it's actually going to have. Oh, and and also an extension of that, I think the Wii U gets a massive price cut because why the fuck not? You got to move those consoles that you have in a warehouse out in Ohio somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be... Like, drop it to $200 straight with with a pack-in game. Uh, whether it be Star Fox or Mario Kart or something, you you just get rid of your stock, uh, declare it a legacy platform, and just wipe your butt clean, as clean as you can anyways, and move on. And put Wii, Wii U, and GameCube stuff in the NX. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, and, and speaking about my Nintendo, the, the next one I got is... And this is a super long shot, but everybody thought it was a long shot that they'd ever make mobile games. I think they will partner with Steam to put retro collections on PC. Nintendo? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, you also would have said that about mobile three months ago. No. Their, their, their games will eventually be on PC, and I think they might just do something with Steam this year. That'd be kind of cool if if I had an NVIDIA Shield because then I'd just go around playing Nintendo games all like throughout the apartment. I mean, let's just be honest. Probably 85% of people who play retro games already emulate them on ZS, NES, or uh, Dolphin, whatever, whatever. Why not just, why not just get forward-facing on that and just be like, hey, let's just put the games on PC charge 4.99 whatever whatever and there you go 4.99 whatever whatever's <laughs> uh, yeah we, we don't know what currency that is but the whatever whatever's and i mean sega sega did it and they seem to be doing okay with with their pc ports um nintendo d- directly doesn't have to work with the ports they give they pass that off to a third party developer and they make a pc version you know, they don't have to do that in-house. I mean, granted, they'd probably want to. But I, I think it's it's an eventuality that Nintendo games will be on PC. I think they need to be forward-facing, acknowledge that most people who play them on PC, I mean, well, all of them who play them on PC, are emulating them. And if they could just be forward-facing and be like, hey, here we go, here's a Steam collection of NES Mario, SNES Mario, blah, blah, blah. I think they would be raking in the cash and not really have to worry about the next console. Hmm. They could have they could have a generation to kind of lick their wounds. Yeah, it would be an interesting revenue. 
And let's um, be honest, Nintendo needs to lick their fucking wounds for a while. Her wounds are very wet. And I think they need to spend some time kind of currying favor with third parties because I think they're in a position where they real where they need to realize without third party support, you're going to fail this these this day and age. You're going to fail. Yeah, you, you can't really scrape by on your own anymore. Yeah, your your own like you know, I'm we're both huge Nintendo fanboys. They can no longer skate by on their laurels. They can no longer say we're Nintendo. They like we make quality games. It's like you did. You, well, you make quality games, but you put two of them out a year. You can't have a console like that. You can't have a console that releases two quality games a year and call it good. And then like, put Ryu in your fucking biggest fighting game ever. Yeah, I mean, video consoles are are losing favor in Japan exponentially the the european market's getting a little bigger and the american market is still huge you need to realize that you need third party support you just you do mhm they they need a lot of third party support and i think the best way to get that you know to to kind of take a step back and recollect themselves is to just go go with the flow of the pc just go with it Put your retro collections on Steam and kind of collect yourself. Kind of take take some time, curry curry some favor with third party developers, mend those bridges because they've been burning those bridges and they're still burning since the SNES days. I mean, they 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 just need to do something there. Hope they put Super Noah's Ark on there. <laughs> oh wait, they did. They're gonna. Uh, next one on that list is, uh, I mean, this game's already been announced, Fallout 4, but they're gonna announce that it's coming out in October. You think October? Yeah, I, I, I think it's this year, and I think it's October. Um, there's, there's just too much information of that game already out. Bethesda, uh, they're going to show the game. They're going to have actual gameplay and I think that game is is far, far it looked far enough along. I mean it it I, I feel that game's coming out soon. I think it's within the next five months. Five days. <laughs> next and, Thursday. Welcome to our Bethesda E three press conference. Here's Fallout Four. And one more thing. It's on store shelves today. With all the DLC. Forever. But yeah, I, I think that game looked far enough along, and Bethesda's not really known for announcing something and then taking two years to get it out. I mean, even with Skyrim, they announced it, and within a year it was already out. Um, I think I think they're going to announce this and, and just barrel their head down and say this game's coming out this year, and... It's not going to be a delayed game because they already know the game's going to be broken when they release it. <laughs> it's Bethesda. Well, like, give it a few months. Working on this. Right? Please understand. <laughs> and my last one of the whole thing is I think Squaresoft finally shows off a good game. <laughs> I think they finally decide to not make another port or HD edition of a Final Fantasy game. You think Final yeah. Fantasy Fifteen? I, they're definitely going to show that, but I, uh, I'm, I'm already in the camp that that's probably not going to be a good game. I think they're either going to, they're, I think they're going to show off Kingdom Hearts three because they announced that two years ago. I think they're finally going to show that off. They announced it when they announced the original Kingdom Hearts game. It was like three <laughs> games, yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, and I think they're actually also going to either announce a remake or a new Valkyria Chronicles or a Chrono game. Either uh, a sequel to Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross or just an entirely new Chrono game. Chrono Bangarang. I, I just think Squaresoft, outside of their Enix games, like all the stuff they have with Eidos, like Tomb Raider... And every other property, I don't think they've made a proper announcement 
or even released a good game in a really long time um, on an actual console. I know their handheld games have some good favor, like Bravely Default. Um, I think they're going to show some of Bravely, Bravely Default 2 because that game was announced a little back. But yeah, I think they're going to announce a new console game that's for once in several years going to be a good game. What about a new and, Tales of game? Don't they announce like a new Tales of game like every other week? But one that's not shitty. I've never enjoyed those games, so I played one of them. It took me sixty five hours just to beat. It took me sixty five hours to get past the starter zone. And then I died and had to start over. Oh, I'm sorry. By a Squaresoft game, that's good. I mean, they cut out all the dumb bullshit and actually make a coherent, cohesive game that I don't have to waste 80 hours to to finish. I liked so, that. Uh, I I'm played. Talking about a, I'm talking about a good 20 to maybe 40 hour game that doesn't have a whole lot of the fluff that we've been just vomited on for years and years like i i i think in as much as i hate to say this i think some i think jrpgs need to take some advice from western rpgs and stop sucking all around yeah yeah kind of um and and i i don't i don't mean particularly western influence games because i mean hell even despite the fact that witcher with the witcher series is developed in poland it has Western influence written all over it. And thank God for that. Um, because if they could take more from Skyrim, Witcher, uh, Fallout, uh, that Wasteland game that I've heard is amazing, which kind of is just a Fallout 2. Um, yeah, if, if, if they could make a more cohesive and pointed story that maybe doesn't deal with an ultimate evil badass destroying the world with a big sword with a super with a sword twice as big as the moon um, that that's not gonna happen yeah but i certainly wish it would because squaresoft has some really talented developers programmers and they have they still probably have some of the best cgi out there and their graphics are amazing it's just they haven't they haven't moved forward in the world of storytelling in a really long time. They've been like, doing the same shit for so long. Yeah, it's like back in the SNES days, that shit was revolutionary. We get it. It's move like, hey guys, you remember that story you played twenty years ago? It's back. You remember Chrono Trigger? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make that game for the three DS. It's like, but you just did that on the DS. <laughs> Again. Yeah, but I, I think Squaresoft is going to announce either something in their other lines, maybe a, uh, what is that one game? Um, something Saga. Um, but yeah, they're going to announce probably a, a new game in one of their other lineups that isn't done to death, where they don't have to put a 15 on it. Xeno Saga? No, that, that's Monolith. Hmm. Um, oh. Vagrant story. Vagrant story. That's not Saga. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, it's um, wrong. But yeah, I I think they're going to pull from one of their other IPs and, and actually maybe get back to making good games. That would be cool. Yeah. 40 hours is such a long time on a game. And then I remember all the hours I've put into other games. And I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's okay. It works. As long as those 40 hours are entertaining. Yeah, but like for the Tales games, like part a big portion of that 65 that I played was grinding. Yeah. Yeah, nobody nobody likes grinding. Nobody. Some people do. Like very even, few though, and it's not enough to base the game off of. Guess guess what? Blizzard realized that and now they have and they've had the most lucrative MMORPG in the world ever. Because they realize people don't fucking like grinding. Pay five bucks, you go up to level 90. Fuck yes, dude. Like, people do not like grinding. No matter what no matter what nationality you are, ethnicity, ethnicity you are, no matter what, we all agree 
it's the one thing that unifies us as a human race. None of us fucking like grinding. Never have. We pretended to when we were kids because we didn't have a whole lot of other shit to do. I don't know if it's that we pretended. It's like we didn't know any better, so we just did like it. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have jobs, and we didn't go to college, and we didn't do all this other shit that, you know, we we needed time sinks back then. We don't need them so much anymore. Like, even even teens these days don't need time sinks because they're they're busy with doing their drugs and listening to their Fallout boys. Their boys are all falling out. They're fuck boys. Like that's a new term that I've heard lately that I don't have. I have no inkling or idea what it means. But fuck I think boy, the, you're I a fuck boy. The, I think the teens are saying it. So the youngins are saying it nowadays. The, yeah, the cool kids are saying fuck boys. I need to get on that and figure out what fuck boys means because I very well might be a fuck boy. Probably. Probably. But yeah, it's just you know people who grew up with gaming that are past the age of college who are still playing games and it's a very big market um because what you grew up doing is you have a tendency to keep doing it until you die uh if you liked playing football when you were in high school chances are you're gonna watch football games your whole life forever forever Get me some PF flights or what was the shoe in Sandlot called? PF flights, wasn't it? Uh, I don't. It's been a long time since I've seen that. I think it's PF flights. You know, they were just basically Converse, of course. But yeah, it's just uh, yeah. Let's let's not do grinding anymore. Let's let's bash faces in with uh with bows and arrows and bats. <laughs> let's not do grinding. Oh, Tim, so naive. Let's not do grinding. Nobody wants to grind. It's always going to be grinding. Where there's a JRPG, there's 4 million experience points needed to reach the next level. Then I will gladly stay at level 1 and find a game genie to beat your game at level 1. Exactly. That's another easy prediction. Game genies are making a comeback for the (laughs) PS4 and Xbox One. On the CD. Oh, that'd be so fucking cool. Like, you know, because they all have USB adapters, like a USB Game Genie. That would fucking be awesome. Hmm. Would be if... I got nothing. Let's stop wasting our fucking time with this podcasting shit. Let's start making USB Game Genies. Or, you know, just make it downloadable. I don't know. There's something real cool about like making a USB dongle that just fucking cheats every single game. Yeah, interestingly enough, I had somebody in GTA 5 that was hacking last night. Like He was on our side, but it was really annoying. Hacking in a PC game? No way. You can't do that. It gave me $7 million, though. (laughs) Nice. Damn, I wish I was on. Yeah, he'll probably be on later, so you can throw money at you, or we can just split some of the money I've got. <laughs> so, any other E3 predictions before we call it a night and start with real E3 tomorrow? Uh, Microsoft's going to announce a handheld. Never mind, no. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. No, they're never going to do that. I was reading something, though. Somebody was like, it was like the outlandish predictions that they had. Yeah. And they're like, Microsoft's going to announce a handheld. It was like 25% maybe. They're like, maybe. Like, I don't that's know. It's like, no. Out- that's not even outlandish. That's just impossible. Like, They don't have any reason to compete in that market. Nobody has a reason to make handhelds anymore at all. It's kind of a dead market. It's going to die. I mean... Sony has already announced the Vita is a legacy platform. It's dead. Move on. It was like, dead when they announced it. Because they're like, it's going to have double touch screens and a pad and a dual analog stick and in 3G and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, don't want it anymore. It's, it's too much phone, stuff. It's going to phone home every night. And you're going to have to buy a new memory stick. Doesn't that sound fun, guys? No. And it's not like SD where you can get it for super cheap. It's I'm, fucking stupid expensive. I'm pretty sure I know what a fuck boy is now. People it's who pe- bought the Vita. The people who made the Vita. And the people who decided to buy it. 
I bought one. I know you're a fuck boy. Yeah, but Shovel Knight on handheld. I know Shovel Knight's on 3DS. 3DS too. I know. I have it on both, but you can't get Luftrouses on 3DS, and I can get it on the Vita. Hmm. So, yeah, it's just God. It's just I think I think handheld platforms are dead. Sad, sadly enough, I think they're just dead. Yeah, that's sad. As I look over my three Game Boys over there, I'm sad. These guys are dead. Put new batteries in them. Damn. Oh, man. Everything's changing. Why do things have to change? Because cartridge-based medium is dying. Bring back carts. With their stupid CR2032 batteries. God, I've had to replace so many of those throughout my lifetime. And it's almost impossible to keep them from, like, ruining your save file. Oh, no, it's corrupted as fuck all the time. You, but you have to have a way to keep it lightly powered while you're yeah. changing out batteries, and that's super hard to do. Yes, yes, it is. All right, well, this has been Drink Game Drunk's E3 prediction. I hope this has gotten us our 11th subscriber because we're totally doing this only because E3 is popular right now. What's E3? Oh, shit. God damn it, Ryan. This isn't PAX? (laughs) Yeah, and so this has been Drink Game Drunk. I've been Tim. And I'm still dying of a spider bite. Thank God. Bye.